Hey, this is Will from DCMesh.org. We are a group here in Washington, D.C. that is putting together solar-powered mesh-tastic repeaters around the city. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, two pieces of technology that we're testing right now. Uh, the first is a bandpass filter, and the second is a directional panel antenna. And the reason you might want to use these is if you're putting a solar powered repeater up on top of a tall building that already has a lot of transmitters, uh, for example, it might have uh, cell phone transmitters or police and fire uh, transmitters. Those transmitters can be noisy and create uh, interference with your meshtastic repeater. So by putting in a bandpass filter, you can cut out a lot of that noise and make it so that your radio can hear everybody much better. The second uh, piece of technology here is the directional panel antenna. This is a nine decibel gain antenna. And you might wanna use this if you have to connect um, two distant parts of the city. So for example, if you had two solar nodes on two different buildings, uh, five miles apart, you might be able to connect them with directional antennas if they aren't able to connect directly uh, with just normal uh, omnidirectional antennas. Uh, so the first is a panel antenna. It's made by McGill Microwave Systems. It is a nine decibel gain panel antenna, directional antenna, uh, sender around 915 megahertz. Um, they recently had a sale on their website. I'm not sure if it's still going, but uh, I got this with shipping for $57.70. And then the uh, second piece of equipment is this bandpass filter. Um, it's made by Airframes, and it is a 4 megahertz wide uh, cavity filter for the uh, lower frequencies around 915 megahertz down to 900 megahertz. Um, it's tunable, so I'm going to be showing how to tune it. Uh, which there's a very good video by uh, Austin Mesh already on how to tune this. This is Austin Mesh originally uh, started using this bandpass filter. Um, I'm going to get the Nano VNA going and show you guys how to tune this up. And for this bandpass filter, I spent uh, $139.25 with shipping. So it's pretty expensive, but it is extremely useful if you are putting a repeater up on the roof of a building that has a lot of other uh, antennas causing interference with your node. Okay, so step one of tuning the bandpass filter is connecting it to the Nano VNA. So I'm going to take the antenna off of my node, put an antenna on there so it's not broadcasting on uh, an open line, and I'm going to hook it up to port one of the Nano VNA. And then I'm going to turn on my Nano VNA. And to show you the full setup, I'm going to go to uh, a open uh, recall channel, which is just me tuning a high frequency antenna for the 20 meter band. And then I'm going to go from this uh, point onwards. Okay, and I put on some uh, labels here to show you what does what. Um, these labels uh, were provided uh, by the Austin Mesh video. Um, so on the top left, we've got the output. On the top or bottom left, we have the input. Then going down, we have these screws that you adjust and they have little locking nuts. And this is for the output coupling, input coupling, resistive tuning, and inter-resistive coupling. And it's worth noting that this was uh, QC'd by Lothar of the Hill People. I am Lothar of the Hill People! And it is uh, 4 megahertz wide, centered around 906.875, meaning once you get it recentered, it's going to have a bandwidth of a total width of 4 megahertz. It's going to reject any signals outside of that 4 megahertz window. And it is supposed to be centered around 906.875 megahertz, which is the default long fast slot 20 or slot zero, which is slot 20 uh, slot. So if you just turn on your mesh-tastic node and don't change any of the uh, settings, which is what we use, we use the default settings here in DC, um, you'll be at 906.875 um, and 
that's what it's supposed to be tuned to when it comes, but it's, it's always good to use a nano VNA or some kind of uh, an antenna analyzer in order to uh, adjust it so that it's absolutely perfect. Okay, so you see I have the nano VNA hooked up to port one. Um, I'm gonna start by just turning on my nano VNA. Um, I'm gonna recall uh, one of my uh, presets that I have for tuning a uh, high frequency antenna for 20 meters. Um, that's just to give me a baseline that we can start adjusting things from. So I want the center of the screen to be at the 906.875 megahertz. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down five megahertz and up five megahertz from there so that the dead center of the screen is 906.875. And I'm gonna do that by, I'm clicking the top menu, so there's this roller here. Click the top menu, I'm gonna hit back, I'm gonna hit stimulus, start. Now five megahertz down is 901.875 M for megahertz. Then on the top, I'm gonna to hit stop, and the, the top frequency I'm gonna use is up five megahertz, so I'm gonna do 911.875 megahertz. Okay, and so now we are set with a SWR and it's showing a very good low range SWR. This is the uh, standing wave uh, resonance. And so it's basically how much of the power is being reflected back into the radio. And I want to be able to see the actual number. So I'm gonna click the top wheel. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna hit marker. And then I'm gonna hit tracking. Okay, so tracking then puts the marker at the lowest possible point, which you can see here, is 1.08 SWR. That's almost absolutely perfect. Okay, and now we're gonna turn on another trace for the Smith chart. So I'm gonna hit the top wheel. I'm gonna hit uh, display, trace. I'm gonna do trace three, which is the purple one. Okay, so now I have trace three. I'm gonna hit back, I'm gonna hit format, and I'm gonna hit Smith. So that's gonna give us a Smith chart. Okay, and I would like my Smith chart to be uh, showing R plus JX. So I'm gonna hit the top button. I'm gonna hit display, trace, trace three. Then we're gonna go back, I'm gonna hit format gonna hit Smith, and then I'm gonna make sure it's selected R plus JX, and go back. And you can see right now the resistance is at 53 ohms. There's a little ohm symbol. So we want this to be at exactly 50, so we're gonna be adjusting the resistance to get this to exactly 50 ohms. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn on another trace. So I'm hitting the top right button trace, I'm going to do trace one, back, format, I want this to be log mag, so I'm hitting that, back, okay, now I have log mag set up as well. And you want the log mag number to be as low as possible, you want the yellow SWR to be as low as possible, and you want the Smith chart to be showing exactly 50 ohms. Okay, so we are now gonna adjust the screws and I'm gonna show you how that affects things on the Nano VNA here. Uh, first, we're gonna do the resistance tune. Um, you can see the purple Smith uh, resistance is 49.7. So this one's already tuned, but I'm just gonna show you what happens when you adjust this. Um, you can see now I'm at 60 ohms, uh, 49 ohms, that's perfect. Um, you know, 49.2. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this with one hand while turning the screw with another to sort of tighten down the lock nut here. Little, little fiddly, but you gotta sort of grab it with one hand and then turn it with another. We're gonna go tune this until we're exactly at 50 ohms, so.
Just tiny, tiny little changes affected. Okay, so that's, we want it right in the middle here at 50 ohms. So that's where we want it. So we've got to bring the, the lock nut down a little bit. So just tightening that up. Okay, perfect. So now I just tightened it by hand. I'm going to back it up a little bit more so that I can uh, put the nut in just a little bit more and this way I'll be able to back, tighten it up with the uh, screwdriver. Just a tiny little bit more. Just do tiny, tiny, tiny changes. Boom, all right, 50 ohms exactly. <clears throat> now the other two we're gonna look at are the log mag and the SWR, and we're gonna adjust those by adjusting the input and output coupling. So I've already got these set up, but I'm just gonna show what happens if I change the input coupling. You're gonna see the SWR rising and it moving to the left, so it's going down in frequency. So we wanna adjust this until the dead center is at the lowest possible level. The dead center is 906.875 megahertz. And so again, I'm going to back this out. I'm gonna tighten up my the nut on here by holding it with one hand and tightening the other nut just a tiny, tiny little bit. And I'm gonna hand tighten it. And then when I get close, I'm gonna tighten it with an actual screwdriver. There we go. So I'm gonna tighten it until we get as low as we can go. 1.03 SWR, that's really good. I'm gonna show you the same thing with the uh, inter-res coupling. So if I adjust this a slight amount, you can see it's just raising our SWR. We don't want that. We want this to be as low as possible. So we're gonna lower it, and that's not quite what we want either. So raise it. There we go, so that's about perfect. Now again, I'm gonna back this out, tighten up the, the lock nut with my other hand, and then tighten this down using the screwdriver. And then I'm gonna finish it by hand here, so, or finish it by screwdriver. So tighten that, and I'm watching the yellow, I'm watching this number, the SWR number. Tighten it down, okay, 1.005 SWR. Doesn't get any better than that. And that's it, that's how you tune the bandpass filter for a Meshtastic. Um, I've, again, I've got it here connected to a nine decibel gain panel antenna. This setup here, once it's connected to a rack chip and a solar panel and battery, um, is gonna be a perfect long distance point to point uh, relay for putting on top of a rooftop where they uh, where we have a lot of interference from other uh, transmitters. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the video here. Check us out. We're at dcmesh.org. Uh, we meet in person every uh, three months or every quarter. So uh, join us for the next meeting in person if you're here around the DMV area. And we also have a Discord. So join us on the Discord.